myself uh, with Reddit and some YouTube videos and stuff, like kinds of different stuff, uh, especially if you have outside uh, equipment restaurant job, started working for a distributor that did Amazon. <laughs>
um, kind of credit card chargeback uh, things that any kind of um, retailer would uh, have to deal with. They're usually easy to fight. You just have to make sure you fight them. Same with A to Z cl claims. Uh, usually a customer will open these uh, erroneously because, you know, they don't know how to return an item or something like that. And uh, if you have the proof that the item was delivered or that mm -hmm. you did do the customer service, you can remove the ODR from from any kind of A to Z claim. And then similar negative feedback here. And then your overall uh, policy compliance here, <clears throat> you can have a, a very healthy rating and you could have thousands of policy compliance hits um, and still be fine. Or you could have one that could be tremendously affecting your, you know, um, mm -hmm. your metrics here. It just depends yeah. on what kind of violation it is and, and that sort of thing. So always checking this first because this is, um, the entire this is the, the account if this is messed up um you know amazon could take the account down or what have you yeah that's frightening so you talked about rating i think so what about seller feedback and seller rating how important is that um okay i mean the the seller feedback um it's important if you're competing against mm -hmm. other people for buy box if you're selling the same items um that sort of thing also, yes, important. You don't want to get a ton of negative feedback, but seller feedback is really, really easy to remove. Um, okay. If the seller feedback has anything to do with shipping or anything like that in your FBA, it gets removed, no problem. Um, if it has anything to do with the, the product that you sold, like, oh, this product is cheap, then you can get it removed because mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with the seller. So um, of, of the type of feedback, uh, product and seller feedback, seller feedback is super easy to remove to seller support doesn't even usually fight you most of the time. If you can find um, something in that feedback that um, is against the terms of service for leaving it for sellers. Yeah, I think there's also one part which is customer complaints that comes through returns and that impacts the seller health a lot or the accounts health a lot. So why don't you put a little bit of spotlight on that as well? So you're talking about like voice of the customer or? Yeah. Yeah, uh, same kind of thing. You definitely want to pay attention to it. And if your voice of the customer ratings spike, you could get your listing removed. But it's really easy to get the listing back up if it's if it's mm -hmm. not a defective product and you're like, nah, this is just a bunch of stupid customers or whatever. Um, all you have to do is like edit the listing, change the title or something like that, and then re-add re it. And then um, you can usually get it up a couple of times. Now, if you have a bad product, um, mm -hmm. you know, say you ship directly from China to Amazon and you thought you got a good inspection and then you start selling your products and then you start returning bad voice of the customer. Maybe it's missing pieces or it's breaking or something like that. Then there's no point in selling that product and, and dealing with that. And you'll have to uh, revisit or relaunch or um, completely scrap that particular product. Yeah, I would like to give one example here. So there was a client of us that was selling into iron products, steel products, and their return rate was more than 21%. You can imagine how high it is, right? So what happened was Amazon took down their listing because of the high return rate and the products were completely coming on defective because of one welding joint was not proper because their inspection, inspection wasn't proper when they have done it through China. So uh, I think that is also something that the sellers needs to check out on and put the more efforts in the inspection that you, you also talked about, right? So how should we tackle this situation? Let's assume there is something happened with one of our A sign and that A sign has been suppressed right now because of the high return rate. Should we just completely uh, create a new A sign because reviews are not there? So what do you take action in this type of situation yeah so so if it actually has a defect like that um mm -hmm. and you still plan on selling it but you're going to get a new batch that doesn't have the defect it's a new new upc new asin because what's going to happen is um very likely that product now has bad reviews because it was broken and it's not worth trying to save the asin um, recall all that bad inventory, get it destroyed or whatever you have to do on uh, can make a completely new, uh, um, product listing. 
Got it, got it. Okay, so let's talk about day-to-day -day task of a seller. Let's assume we are a brand, we are doing good. We decided to hire a virtual assistant and what should be the few metrics that we should look at on day-to-day -day basis? What metrics we should ask that? Okay, VA, you can share today's metrics. How was the day? What are the few two, three metrics that every seller should keep an eye on on an every day-to-day -day basis? So uh, again, you know, always logging into the account, checking the account health. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you want me to demonstrate, I, I can't share my screen anymore. There yeah, we go. Now you can, I think. Go into your inventory, manage your inventory and check. I mean, Steven's account has a ton of stuff on here that, but if, if you're a normal seller um, and, and uh, you shouldn't have any search suppressed listings or um, anything like that, so you're going to check your your listings, make sure nothing's suppressed or um, at risk or anything like that. And then you're going to address those, you know, particularly this one wants to be uh, change the product name or whatever. Um, in addition, if you go in your inventory and you click FBA inventory, you'll go into the drop down here. Make sure you don't have anything that's stranded. So right here, you're going to go to inventory and then stranded inventory and then make sure Nothing here is stranded. This particular one, we have an issue here. Uh, it looks like it got deleted. So we would have to make a new listing, for example. After you make sure you know all of your products are up and they're not suppressed or anything like that, I mean, that's the next thing you're gonna be going into most likely is your advertising and, and going into your campaign manager and checking your you know, uh, seven day, I like to do your seven day, uh, past seven days here and see how your metrics are going um, and then get into the campaigns as as you're as you're doing that and that's I mean we could spend four hours doing that so yeah <laughs> but um, those are you know the the the, the main things um, on a day-to-day -day, like for mm -hmm. for if you were hiring a virtual ass assistant or anything like that then there's other things like maintenance tasks um, updating SEO uh, you know obviously um, you know, I don't, if you're, if you're a plus and stuff like that, isn't built yet doing that sort of thing, um, monitoring your, your competition, you can remove my screen now, if you want, I can't do it. Um, yeah. may, seeing if there's any new players in your space, typing your top keywords in, in, um, in the search and seeing what's coming up. Are your competitors using a new main image? Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. you're selling, you know, um, clothing for dogs and yours has a, rottweiler on it and everybody else has a uh golden retriever well there's a reason yep. why the golden retriever is there because it's converting better uh they've, they've done the testing you know stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah exactly so uh we have talked a lot about uh sellers into dashboard now let's go a little bit deep inside the listing so amazon is bringing on new features to boost their conversion rate of sellers a lot bringing on new opportunities new placement to showcase more products now, if we look at 2023, what are the few new features that you have tried out and worked really well for your clients in terms of boosting conversion rate? Let's assume, let's assume if we talk about a minimum two, three percent, two, three percent is higher, but let's talk about what are the things that can boost con conversion rate a lot when you talk about new features. Well, when you're talking conversion, it's two two main things is is main image and mm -hmm. and um, your price. So, yeah. you know, some things that we've done in the past couple of months, Steven's talked a lot about it, mm -hmm. is um, Amazon's gotten really lax on the main images. Mm -hmm. It used to be yeah. only white background, you know, all this stuff. Now you can stage things. If you're in home and, and you know... Um, Furniture, uh, I think. Yeah, if you're selling pillowcases, you can sell them in a bedroom with a bed as your main image, right? And it converts better. You're talking about a 2%, you know, jump. Uh, just the dog example, if you're selling anything animal related, food, whatever, put the animals in, in the main image. Um, mm -hmm. That's where you get that connection. Uh, in addition to, you know, any kind of um, main image testing, look, look at, especially if you're in a, a launch or an early product and you have a lot of competition yeah. in your niche, um, you know, one thing that you need to uh, look at is your price 
in the beginning, at least you can become a premium product at premium price as you grow. But if your uh, competition is 1999 and you have very similar creative and similar branding and you're 39.99 and your pet food has, you know, less uh, product inside of it or something like that, it's going to be hard to overcome or take a piece of that market share, depending on, um, you know, what you're getting yourself into. You need to pay to play, lose some money in the beginning to get that market share and build that brand up to get to that strike price that you want to be at. Um, other things that will improve your conversion, obviously, you know, we've had brand story over the last uh, year that has come in that also helps with your indexing and SEO and all that good stuff. Um, and uh, mobile, make sure your product is, or your, your product detail page is optimized for the app. Look at it on the app on your phone. Um, you can see the metrics now. Amazon released that to us. Most people are buying on the phone um, most products, unless you're in mm -hmm. like industrial office supplies or something like that. Um, if yeah. uh, they're going to buy that dog food or that that uh, little that yo-yo for little Johnny, they're doing it on their phone. And that's where main image comes into play and is so important because we're in a TikTok Pinterest type of um, world now where the image has to be right. It's, it has to be exactly what they want or they're just going to swipe away. Are they going to read the entire title? No, they don't care. They're looking for exactly what they're looking for visually in their head. So that's where you're going to really win on conversion and making sure that that main image is exactly what that keyword is that the consumer's um, typing in to um, get the get the purchase. Yeah, uh, so I think we did this with one of my brand as well. Uh, it was into home and furniture. What happened was we first used a complete white background image and it turned out that Amazon suppressed the main image. Then we tried to nail down a little bit more and talk to the seller support and obviously seller support is best at responding to any cases, right? So they told us that, okay, catalog team only available in Wednesday and Friday. You can get it solved only in Wednesday and Friday. And then what happened is they told us, no, it is under, under your terms. So white background is there and it is good to go. But it was still suppressed. We tried to reach out again. Then they have given us, okay, now you have to change it to lifestyle format because it is in home and furniture. And they have given us one, their catalog where it shows how the main image should be when it comes to furniture category. We replaced it. Again, after a few days, it uh, got suppressed due to another issue and we have to get it back. So it was a constant back and forth because the teams inside Amazon seller support was completely different. The one that knows that it is under TOS was not connecting directly to the other team. So this kind of situation is pretty normal, I think, because Amazon seller support is the best in responding to any cases, right? So uh, I think we should talk a little bit about uh, more sales because now since we talked about conversion rate, we should talk about more options that Amazon now have rolled out apart from Amazon advertising. What are the other opportunities that sellers have in terms of getting more sales? Let's, it may be post, I think a lot of things are now launched, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, all kinds of different stuff, uh, especially if you have outside uh, influence or mm -hmm. branding on social yeah. media or anything like that, you've got brand attribution. Um, one thing that we do, uh, recommend here for our clients that have do have some website traffic but um you know shopify website traffic whatever is is always very very low converting i mean that's that's normal is uh we'll have them add um available on amazon button on their website that you can click because mm -hmm. the attribution link goes directly to product detail page of the brand store and um we'll see that the website orders stay kind of where they've been uh, but we're getting those uh, additional sales so people are comfortable going directly to Amazon. Their credit card's already in there. They're prime, yeah. they have prime membership, you know. Um, but, you know, there's other things like, you know, uh, you said not spot, not um, Amazon PPC, but um, a lot of people are taking advantage of DSP. If you have strong branding now, um, that is an option for sure. Those are expanding to different types of platforms uh, constantly, you know, uh, Kindle mm -hmm. lock screens and Fire TV now and all that good stuff. 
So a big thing, you know, that we're proponents of uh, is video. Uh, not everybody does video. Your competition doesn't do video a lot of times. And yeah. there's specific spot for video advertising um, on the search page. And a lot of mm -hmm. times on a lot of keywords, that spot isn't taken by anybody. So it's really, really easy to get that spot and, uh, on a keyword that's relevant um, and decent search volume for your product and take over that big, giant video ad. Uh, and again, on mobile, that thing takes up the whole screen when you when you scroll by it. So yeah. mm -hmm. uh, that's a big, big way to drive uh, extra traffic to your products. How do you find Amazon Post to be converting? Is it is it doing good? How do you find if Amazon posts are, are converting? Yeah. Is that what you said? Do you think it is? Yeah. It's it's the cherry on top. It's it's very, very um, dependent on how many followers your brand store has. And mm -hmm. um, you can see the metrics here. You, you put my screen up real quick. Um, oh, not that one. Sorry. You can take it down. Let me find the right one. <laughs> uh, one second. Here we go. Okay, now you can put it up. So um, these are our social posts. We just schedule them out. Uh, pretty simple stuff. If you want to take mm -hmm. a look at one of them, it's just uh, one of our products and a picture that um, relates to our target demographic or target audience, and then some uh, text here. And you can see the metrics on engagement and product clicks, reach, that sort of thing. Um, and that's kind of how you, you gauge if you're getting anywhere. You can see here, uh, we haven't been getting a lot of engagement since uh, January. <laughs> but uh, something people like this one, whichever post this was on January yeah. 3rd. This one right here, when they like, oh, our soap one, yeah. Um, but again, if you, it, it depends on. You can take my thing down now. Um, you, it depends on how many customers are following your store. If you only have a limited number of followers, um, it's probably not worth your time to do a bunch of social posts. Um, as you get more followers, it, it's good to to at least schedule them out. It'll take you an hour or so if you already have all your images to just schedule them out for the next three months you know every couple of days and um it, okay it's an extra bit of engagement to get some additional sales yeah that was great uh, so uh, jason i think we are already 20 minutes into this so i think we are coming to an end so before we end where can people find you so you can find me um at myamazonguy.com um and on YouTube slash my Amazon. I can't remember what the <laughs> <laughs> also every Friday. Um, if you search my Amazon guy on YouTube at mm -hmm. tw uh, 12 Eastern nine Pacific, um, I do a live Q and a where I answer uh, any and all Amazon questions that you may have. We have a, a large following there, a large uh, amount yeah. of engagement every Friday. So feel free to come ask some questions. Yeah, sure. That was great. I will attach all the links in the description as well. Thank you so much, Jason, for joining us today. It was awesome. All right. Thanks, Sammy.